you can't put in there a referendum a to include a human rights uh, protection laws. Um, you can't then add as well some law there that the parliament shall have the rights to pass laws for Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders. Um, because Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people themselves, I can't see them in any way, shape or form ex accepting that solely as the question in the parliament. It's got to come with some substantive reforms. And if those substantive reforms are not stipulated in the in the act, uh, in the in the process of a referendum, and have it written within the constitution, then I don't think anybody can accept it. Um, even the conservative Aborigines would have trouble um, because um, they don't know <coughs> what they can do, what sort of laws they can pass once they give them the powers. Yeah. Um, and so we have to be very clear on this, uh, the fact that you, you give them any constitutional power, then if you don't have restrictions there and saying, well, you can't do this and you can't do that, you know, you know it's, it's no better than the current race power because it may be that they still make laws that do derogate from the right of Aboriginal people and that will be racially discriminatory because it may interfere with the rights of other white people, other people in this country. So that, that's, a, that's a real issue. Um, and so when we looked at the treaty and they were asking this question, then basically we were saying, yes, if you use the current race power, then you're passing a law for, a, for an alien group, because we are aliens to their system. And there are statutes that says that, yeah, you've got to go back to the founding of the, you know, what they call the Australia, the founding documents, you yeah? and you'll see in there where we are aliens, right, all the way through it. Now, we've never been made denizens, and if you have a look at the definition of denizen, I suggest that people do, that was never done because the king has to make you an individual denizen of his, of his realm, that was never done. <coughs> um, the other thing is that um, the people, when they came out of those when, when they took away all those protection laws, um, then, and we didn't, we were not franchise people. We were never given citizenship, so we remained Aborigines outside that system. Right? And so there's there's a great deal of complication. So when they're dealing with a referendum, uh, with a treaty, then they would be treating with a foreign people. Right? We are, it, unlike John Howard and Tony Abbott. Whether they like it or not, we are not citizens of this country. Yeah. Um, and it's the courts who are maintaining this myth. Yeah. Uh, the judicial system are maintaining a myth uh, without truly going into it. Yeah. And the only, only judge that ever said, or two judges that ever said that there, were, that there was a merit in this question in the High Court was in the in uh, Paul Coe's case in '75, when he um, when he raised that question about sovereignty, and of course Murphy and Jacobs agreed that he should go away and amend his application, um, restricted to his own nation, and argue from that position rather than for all Aborigines, yeah, um, because they said you can't because they understood the dynamics. They understood the linguistical and they understood the, um, the fact that we have many nations in this country and one person cannot speak for the others. Yeah. Um, so, and then, then, then you get down to the American Indian models where one band or one clan can't talk for the land of the other clan. Yeah. And so you've got to get right down to that nitty gritty. Right now this whole system that's currently going on is, is totally flawed because they're not doing and consulting. And the fact that they're saying we don't have enough money, but yet they can sponsor big football matches and TV and pay TV and pay all sorts of advertisements, millions and millions of dollars, but they can't, don't have enough money to go around to the community and talk to people and put it out there and get two points of view in language, in print and video media um, so people can 
sit and think about these things. Um, but they're doing it one way and one way only. Um, it don't work. When we looked at um, that treaty also, it was interesting that um, that the NAC were advised that yes, all those laws that underpin treaties, that give security to treaties, such as the Treaty of Law of Treaties, the Vienna Convention, to govern it, as well as um, all of those reports to the UN on, on treaties and um, understanding you know, the weaknesses of treaties, the, the international law on human rights and the treaties that we want to talk about, right, um, can be, can be um, used using the foreign powers. Yeah? And so the government of Australia, to negotiate a treaty with Aboriginal people under the existing constitution, would have to use the foreign power as well, because we are a foreign people. Yeah, to that system, because after all, Australia's sovereignty doesn't come from Australia, it comes from the British Crown, and the British Crown are classified as a foreign power, so, um, and Aboriginal people have never, there's no documents where we've acquiesced to see them, so we are a foreign people to this system. Now. The current system that they're operating under right now with this referendum council, they're not making any any um, clarification that this is the case. They're not discussing that. Yeah? And so they're pretending that we are all British subjects, that we're all Australian citizens. Not so. And this is why they can't begin to go into that discussion in those forums, because the young people now are educated enough to know that if we're foreigners, then why should we become part of that foreign system? And this is why they were shutting them down. They didn't want that discussion to happen. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's sad. On the other side of this coin, they asked about, OK, well, do we have to be part of the Constitution um, to negotiate a treaty? And so um, nobody was able to answer that. Nobody gave any definitive answer because they knew that if they had to be truthful and transparent, <clears throat> then you'd have to say, no, you don't have to be in the Constitution at all. And if you, if you say, yes, we have to have a constitutional referendum to recognize Aborigines in the Constitution, then we can write it. Then our, the Constitution will be constitutionally based and give us some protection. No, not true, not true. Because, you see, once you go into the treaty and you say, okay, now we've consented to Australia um, authorizing um, by way of a referendum that that Commonwealth Parliament shall have the powers to pass laws for Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders, that means that we have to work within their system and we can't go beyond their system, yeah? Because they can only treaty with us um, under the powers that they have under their own constitution. They can't go beyond that. And so when you read the constitution and what the Australian constitution says, the executive parliament of this country, the executive government of this country can only pass laws for those things that the constitution says they can pass. Now. So if we're going to talk about <coughs> cultural rights and maintaining our, our joke about our dreaming, right, then they have to look at some very serious laws that are already in existence. And those laws are, A, the registration of the um, Anglican Church, because yeah, they have an Anglican Church Act in Australian law. Um, they have the Catholic Church. Yeah. Now, part of their problem is, okay, we have laws that could be likened to Sharia law in this country. Very different. We have capital punishment. We have corporal punishment yeah, in our law. So, once they get the constitutional power to pass laws for Aborigines, all that's gone. The people will be prosecuted for exercising their own law. Done. Um, the other thing is, that because 
they don't recognise Aboriginal um, Tukapa, Lumara, as a religion, yeah, then those sacred places of ours um, are not places of temple worship. Yeah. Um, they're just a block of land with nothing on it. And like they say in Western Australia, well, you no longer use it again, so we deregister it, you know? And so all of this will come to a position where they will destroy our sites. And they will also destroy other sacred places, yeah? Look, if Western Australia has a law that can allow them to destroy arts, arts in the rocks, rock art, yeah, or just cut it up and move it somewhere, then it don't belong to those other places where they move it if they put it in a museum. It don't belong to them. It belongs to where that place is because that story relates to that place and only that place. Yeah? And then that connects through song lines to other places throughout Australia. And so you can't pick it up and take it away. You can't. Right? Now, how do we, if once they get the power to pass laws for Aborigines, how do we stop that? How do we circumvent that? Um, then, you know, if, I, if I'm thinking like the Referendum Council, well, they'll say, well, that's why we need an elected Aboriginal body to advise them. But you're in, you're in you know, they got to understand that when you're in, a, in an advisory capacity, they only have to have regard for it, yeah? It's not a matter of they shall not, yeah? They only have to have regard for your, your, your culture, and then, then they do it in the national interest, yeah? And so national interest will override Aboriginal interest because we're only a small minority and it's only a little place over there. Oh, we can pick them rocks up and we can move them over here and put them in a museum for you. We'll build a big place for you, put them in there. No one can touch them anymore, but they're locked away in those places. No, because they want that mine, that gold that's underneath it or that, that minerals that's underneath that, yeah? So we will become subject to their laws, their lawmaking procedures. We lose control over our culture. We lose control. And unless it's specifically stated in the Constitution that they shall not do that, then um, we have no way of stopping them. We, you know, sure, they, people can say, oh, we'll take them to court and, you know, get the court to give us protection and all that there. No, no. Because then once you pass the law to give them the powers to pass laws for Aborigines, then once they do that, there are any laws that prohibit anything in the national interest, then you've given the parliament the power to change that law. Yeah? And so Aboriginal Chukupa and our law can be changed by that parliament. And that's not what they're not telling the old people. You know? and, they, and they were talking about this grey-haired fella out there with that headband, you know, interfering and telling them old fellas lies. Yeah? My lawmen, mate, because of my status with them, I'm not allowed to tell them lies. That's not my people. They have a right to kill me if I tell them lies and mis misguide, misguide them. That's their law. That's our law. I can do that back home, but we don't. We don't talk about that. You know, we don't deal with that. So we can't. We have rules and regulations in our law that stop you from telling lies. That stop from that stop you from misrepresenting things. Yeah. And all these people who are operating right now, they're operating outside that law. They're operating in a white law. And in a white legal system, you can tell lies anytime you want to, to suit your circumstances. And there's some very convincing liars.